Are you sick and tired of flying 50 feet and having your quad fail safe on you and fall right out of the sky? Or how about flying no matter how far away with crappy video signal? Today I wanted to talk about my definitive list of everything that you need to fly mid to long range with your quad. First, I wanna tell you guys that it's definitely possible to go mid to long range using 5.8 gigahertz without a ground station. Check out this clip of me going as far as I could in a straight line away from my house. In total, I reached about 1600 meters, which was about one third of a mile. I didn't have any breakup in video and I ended up running out of battery faster than the video was breaking up and I had to turn around. First, let's talk about the components that affect the range of your mini quad. The first thing is gonna be the VTX, which transmits the video signal that your camera sees. The next is gonna be the antenna that you've got on your VTX. After that, we have the receiver module, which receives the signal from your radio. And then we have the receiver antenna, which receives the signal from your radio. On your body, you should have your goggles, your goggle module, your goggle antennas, and to control the quad, of course you need your radio, but then you need your radio module. First, let's talk about the VTX. This is the part of your quad that transmits the video from the camera to your goggles. You want a really good brand, something like a TBS or AKK or a Fusion. One of those brands are gonna be really good, but you also want something that transmits at a higher output power. Some of you might have had varying experiences with lower output power, but I'm going to recommend that when you're flying mid to long range using 5.8, you need a minimum of at least 800 milliwatts going all the way up to 1000 milliwatts or 1200 milliwatts. We're not talking about flying with other people here, so we don't really have to worry about blasting someone else's signal out when you're flying. Yes, you can fly with other people at these higher powers, um, but you have to be very careful about how you do it. So that's gonna be the first step. Next, let's talk about your VTX antenna. This is a really important part to getting good, clear transmissions. Every antenna has a specific DVI value. This is basically a multiplier on the power output from your VTX. Um, I won't go into the exact details of how it works, but ideally, the higher your DBI, the stronger your signal is gonna come out of your VTX. First, if you have a single antenna on your quad, take it off immediately because that is giving you really bad reception. Dipole antennas are much less effective than a circular polarized antenna like this iFlight antenna I have on right here. From what I've been able to see during my flights, pretty much every good high quality brand circular polarized antenna will work for mid to long range flights. Some are gonna be a little bit better than others, but you want to stick with a good brand. Don't go on Amazon and purchase the cheapest circular polarized antenna that you can find because it's not gonna work. Making these antennas is like dark Harry Potter magic. It's very specific in the way that they need to be made. Um, so go ahead and spend a little bit of money on getting a good antenna. And you might be asking right hand versus left hand polarized. It doesn't matter. You just have to make sure that whatever is on your VTX is also on your goggles. So now that we've talked about the VTX and the video signal coming out of the quad, let's move on to the radio signal. It's really important to have the right system when you're flying mid to long range. Now there's a few different options out there, but I'm going to strongly recommend that you just blindly follow my recommendation here because it's the best. And after months of learning the hard way, I think you'll come to the same conclusion. So I'm trying to honestly save you that time. Go with what's known as the TBS Crossfire system. This system works on a special wavelength that allows for a long range connection. I'm not gonna go into the details of how it works. All I'm gonna say is that you have to use it. Something like 50 miles, theoretically, I, I believe is what they say on their site. Um, that varies a little bit with the different receiver modules, but that's the system that you wanna go with. If you are tired of having fail safes at not even a football distance, football field distance away, TBS Crossfire. If you're tired of just having really low RSSI, being scared of where you're flying, um, not having that confidence in your flight, 
TBS Crossfire. Just say it with me, TBS Crossfire. It's the solution for everything. It works so well and you'll never have to worry about flying again. You'll literally never fail safe. So please, the other thing with TBS Crossfire that I feel like a lot of people tell me is that they're scared of it. It seems really difficult and hard to set up. And I don't know why people think that. It's actually the easiest to set up. Uh, I can make a future video about how that actually works if there's some interest in it, but it's one of the easiest systems to set up. It's literally one setting in Betaflight, one click on the TBS agent on the computer, you've bound the receiver to the remote, and you're all ready to fly. The way the TBS Crossfire system works is you have a receiver built into the quad, just like any other 2.4 gigahertz receiver, and then you have a module on your radio. This module plugs right into the back of your FR Sky radio, and it'll work with a lot of different radios. Some are easier to set up than others, but those are the two things that you need. You need the radio module and the receiver for your quad. That's gonna give you the most range, the most confident flight, and literally zero fail safes. Confidence is really important in what we are doing as pilots. When you're flying five inches off the side of a building or through trees or over water or any of those high risk flights, that you have 100% confidence in your control link. It sucks so bad to be flying 2.4 gigahertz and have the thing just stop. You're, you have clear video in the goggles and you're flying along and it's like dead stick. You just crash into whatever it is. Hopefully you're not too far away and you can go get it. Or worst case scenario, you're 100 feet up and you crash into the top of a tree at 100 feet with no chance of getting the quad back. So don't chance it. Even if you're not planning on going long range, just put all of your quads on the TBS Crossfire system. You'll thank me later, you'll thank your wallet, and you'll have a much better time flying. All right, so we've talked about what's on the quad. We've talked about what kind of radio setup that you need. Now let's talk about your goggles. This is really important, my friends. Please, please, please do not go on Amazon and find the cheapest $50 set of box goggles that claim they have diversity. And then think, well, it has diversity. It's analog. Analog's kind of all the same, isn't it? It's not. It's really not. Don't make that mistake. When I first started, that was the mistake that I made because I didn't wanna spend $200 on a goggle module, and I didn't wanna to have to buy some higher priced goggles like the Fat Shark HDOs or HDO2s. Uh, but what I will say is that you're going to save yourself a lot of heartache by just spending a little bit more money to really make an investment in yourself and in your flights from the beginning. So what you want is you wanna start with a pair of goggles that allows you to put a module in the goggles. Now these are standardized modules. Um, there are some goggles that are not name brand goggles like Fat Sharks that will allow you to put modules in, but stay away from all of those goggles that have built-in modules like the Sky Zones and um, some of those other brands. Some of you may be saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, I I've had good luck with those. And if you have, that's great. But in general, I'm trying to really nail down what it takes to get good mid to long range video signal. And you want something like the Fat Sharks with a goggle module um, holder, right? So if you get the, the Fat Shark uh, Scouts, those aren't gonna let you put a goggle module in there and you need to put a goggle module in to get the best reception. So you can go with something like the Dominator V3s, you can go with the HDOs, the HDO2s, Orcas even accept a module. I know they're a little bit more expensive, but you can always go on eBay or check your local Craigslist to find a pair of goggles that someone might be retiring for a lot less. Now, let's talk about the exact module that you wanna use. This is very, very specific here because you're not gonna have good success with any other modules, honestly. Um, you're not gonna have, don't try any of these other lower end modules, if you really want the best long to mid range video signal, you have to use a Furious FPV True D module, a True D X, a TBS Fusion, or Immersion RC Rapid Fire module. Those are four modules 
do not deviate from those. Don't think that you found a really good deal on an old LaForge module and that's gonna be fine. It's not, it, it really is not. You need to have at least one of those four modules. Now there are some competitors like Foxier makes the Wildfire. Um, I've heard some good things about it. It's about $90. In general, stick with at least one of the, those four modules and you're going to have a good time every time. In fact, the video that I first played at the beginning here where I went one third of a mile, that was on the Fusion True D, not even the True D X. So please stick with those modules and you're gonna save yourself a lot of heartache. In fact, I think that's why a lot of people switch to DJI because they start off with analog, they buy a really crappy pair of analog diversity goggles on Amazon, they fly across the street and they're like, why is my video dropping? And it's because, you know, the goggles that they purchased were terrible. And same with the, the VTX that might be on their quad. Maybe they're running 25 milliwatts or they're running 200 milliwatts. And they're like, well, I'll just go DJI because it gets much better range. So we talked about the VTX on your quad. We talked about the receiver on your quad. We talked about the radio and the goggles and the module. Let's talk about antennas. This is another really important aspect to getting good mid to long range video. Your antennas are not something that you can go on Amazon and get the cheapest ones possible. I know it seems like they're very similar, but they're not. You have to go with really good brand antennas. I'm gonna recommend two different types. You have the patch antenna, and then you have the stubby circular polarized antenna. They do two different things, and I won't go into the exact details of how they work, just to say that you need a patch and a circular polarized for mid to long range. The brand that you should choose that I would recommend is Axie 2. You can choose the Axie 2 Duo, which is what I have on here. You can choose the Axie 2 Stubby or the Extended Stubby. I like this one because it gets it a little bit up off your head so it's not blocked by the actual goggles versus being right down here where you, you have this part of the goggle sort of blocking the circular polarization. The other brand that you can get is the Spironet LZR. That's a really nice setup. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's actually two giant patch antennas that mount right onto the front of your Fat Shark goggles, and that will get you a really long range. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Check down in the comments below. I'm gonna post links to all of these different products and where you can find them. I will also post my exact setup, how I'm using it, so you can use it too if you like. Thanks so much for watching, stay tuned for more.